Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for complete Comlex prep resources. That's comlexflashcards.com. Let's talk about acute supportive otitis media in an acute ear infection and also compare that with otitis media with effusion. Keep in mind both of these result in an ear infection or are the cause of an ear infection. Now, both have an effusion associated with it and the difference is the acute inflammation that occurs in these diseases. Children may have persistent effusions with repetitive ear infections that are close together so the effusion does not resolve. The majority of uh, AOM, which is acute supportive otitis media, is caused by strep pneumonia, non-typable H influenza, moroxella card cataralis. It's important to know these three organisms and the fact that they cause um, acute supportive otitis media. The remainder are other bacteria or viruses. Commonly, uh, eustachian tube dysfunction or obstruction is very commonly seen. To make the diagnosis, uh, history of acute onset of symptoms with fever, pain, limitation of normal activities is important. Also the presence of a, me a middle ear effusion such as a bulging tympanic membrane, limited or absent motility and mobility of the membrane, otoria or air fluid levels are um, other clues that help you clinch the diagnosis. Signs and symptoms of a middle ear infl inflammation include distinct ear thema or distinct otalgia. So acute onset of symptoms with fever pain limitation some sort of a middle ear infusion like bulging tympanic membrane or limited mobility along with signs of middle ear inflammation like ear thema or otalgia all are necessary to make the diagnosis. The best test to uh, make the initial diagnosis is pneumatic otoscopy and that's to observe the normal tympanic membrane movement upon um, insufflation and release so keep that in mind as a high yield point. The treatment, well most episodes of OM resolve spontaneously so a period of observation may be used initially but close follow-up is necessary. So whether you decide to initially treat or not, appropriate pain control is needed such as ibuprofen, acetaminophen, or topical otic agents. Also keep in mind that significant increased rates of bacterial resistance have occurred and um, in the U.S., 40% of non-typable H influenza and almost all of M. cataralis and 50% of strep pneumor are resistant to amino penicillins. So then the question arises is how do you treat the condition? Well, there are some principles of treatment that you have to understand and keep in mind. You treat all children less than 6 months old and you treat all children between 6 months to 2 years with a certain diagnosis or severe illness like fever or severe otalgia and again that's a key factor. If they're less than six months old you treat all children. If they're between six months and two years you have to have certain uh, severe illness to supplement your uh, treatment. And children uh, greater than two years if severely ill um, can receive treatment. Again you want to reevaluate every 48 to 72 hours to assess for any improvements. And for the antibiotics, high dose amoxicillin if there's low grade fever and no recent OM uh, that did not respond to amoxicillin can be used. However, if uh, there's resistance or a high grade fever, then amoxicillin with clavulanate is recommended. And if the patient fails initial observation and has low grade fever and or mild pain, uh, you want to start amoxicillin immediately. Also, if the patient fails initial observation and has high fever and or moderate to severe pain, then you want to start amoxicillin clavulanate immediately. So the treatment here is basically, you know, using either amoxicillin or amoxicillin clavulanate if it's more severe. Final question for this podcast that arises is when should you perform a tympanocentesis or a myringotomy? Well, that's reserved for cases where there's severe refractory pain and hyperpyrexia. Also complications of mastoiditis, facial paralysis, labyrinthitis, and CNS infection are needed, and immunocompromised patients or children who have failed a second line drug therapy, and neonates with AOM with systemic signs um, as part of a sepsis workup all qualify to receive a myringotomy. So again, severe refractory pain and hyperpyrexia, 
complications like mystoiditis, facial paralysis, and labyrinthitis, immunocompromised states or children who have failed second-line therapy, and neonites with AOM with systemic signs um, of sepsis all deserve to get the surgical procedure done. Well, thank you for listening, and good luck in your preparation for the board exam.